fish. No, crop drawing. Most people want a bucket of water and they want the sails. They want to keep on trying to fill that bucket up. But they forget, they've got holes. There's more water leaking out than they can pour in. What it costs you to bring in a new client every time is seven to nine times more than to retain an existing customer. The problem with most businesses, they don't really understand their customers. Once you learn to understand who your customers are, what their needs and wants are, you should be building a ring fence around them and just locking them up, throwing away the key. If you are good at providing your service, whatever service or product that you supply them, you should be focusing on keeping them for life. Most people are very bad at looking after their customers. And the other half don't even really understand. Well, if I told you in an undertaker's business, how do you get customer retention? <laughs> Somebody tell me? Bring them back to life. Okay, that will be a bit hard, I think. Um, okay, let me give, give you another example. Um, going back about six, seven years ago, I did a talk um, on the O2, at the O2 Arena with um, Sir Richard Branson. And when I came off the stage, one uh, major corporate who just doubled, unfortunately, decided to go into the healthcare business. And they acquired somewhere just under 50 care homes. The problem was they couldn't fill in more than 40 to 45 percent capacity. So they're running well below capacity. So they came up to me and said, no, can you help us to try and get more customers in? And I said, well, give me half an hour and we'll have a cup of coffee. Now, what happened there, when I met um, the, their CEO for a coffee, their argument of what they wanted was more customers at the top. So I said, tell me a little bit about your business. He said, because we've got just under 50 care homes, and the average size of the care home is just under 50 to 60 people per care home, and running at 45 to 50% capacity. Every time we try to get that capacity level, people drop off, they die. So how do we keep on trying to get more in? Every area that we've got a care home, the local authority are the only people that we depend on holding. We get some private uh, clients, but the majority of them are dependent on the local authorities giving us work. Without their work, we can't sort of fill the full capacity. So will you come and help us? So we said, look, we'll, we'll speak. These are my fees. This is what I charge, and I'll see what I can do. A couple of weeks later, we met up up north at their head office. And they showed me around the building. We had a good walk around the building and looking around. And I said, is this your average care home, what, what, what you got here where your head office is? And he says, yes, this is what we got there. So we went in with his fellow directors. And his sales director, the first thing was like, how much sales can you increase our organization by? And I said, I don't know the full picture at the moment. So the first thing came to mind was, how, what are you doing? to retain existing customers. He said, there's nothing we can do. That's not in our power, not in our hands. We can't retain customers if somebody's going to die off. There's nothing we can do. It's up to the doctors and up to Almighty above. We have no real control. So what are you doing to look after your existing customers? What's the sort of experience that you create for them to want to be with you as opposed to going after your competitors or absolutely do nothing? So anyway, we spent um, two hours talking with the rest of the co-directors, and I thought, great, it's about time now. I did a little bit of work. I said, can you show, get somebody to show me around the premises? So I went out to my car. I got a pair of old trousers on and a jumper, and I walked around with um, one of the managers who took me around the place. And I said, would you mind leaving me alone for a couple of hours? And all I did for two hours was just walk around the care home, sitting around the reception area, listening to the talk going down where the staff go and have their tea breaks and listen to conversations. I went around a few places, long and short version is, I'd more or less summed it up in a day. I was being paid for three to four days, have a good snoop around and see what I can come up with. But I managed to summarize. So the following morning I came back, I did a little bit more investigation, and I said, can we get your um, board of directors for the afternoon? I've got an idea of what needs fixing and what we need to do to fix it. So we got down the second day, and I said, well, the biggest problem that we've got here is that the customers 
sold all customers or your patients that you have currently inside your care home. You're not looking after them. So what do you mean they're not looking after them? I said, you're not looking after the people that you already have here. If you could look after them, you'd have more. He said, no, you don't understand. There's no way we can have more based on these people. It's not a fair old business. You know, you don't seem to get our business. And I said, well, let me ask you a simple question. I found by sitting around different places, I heard one gentleman come up to the reception, and he said, oh, my mum says, like, no, um, she feels cold at night. If we can't just go next to the blanket, I'll be good or something. And as soon as the young man's back was turned, I heard him start pissed. And a bit later on, I'm walking down further down, somebody where I was serving the tea, somebody comes running out to the tea lady, and so oh, my mum doesn't take sugar in her tea, so can you please in future don't put any sugar in? Pissed. And it seemed to be a constant theme that any time anybody asks for anything, they're going to be So you either are a welcome guest the customers for you, or they're a pest. Now, it depends on whether you want them back or not. If they're the ideal sort of customer that you're searching for, that you're looking for, then they should be your welcome guests at the end of the day. So, long and short version, I'm going to try and summarize this to as quickly as possible, got quite a bit to get through. The short of it is, we basically said, look, you need from now on train your staff to look after the existing customers that you have. What you need to do is the moment a member of their family comes through the door, you really, in all fairness, if they've been there before, your staff should be there to greet them, get their name up in, they should know who they've come to see. The moment they walk through the door, you should be saying to them, what would you like, tea, coffee, or cold drink? Treat them like royalty. And the second thing that we went around and did an investigation by talking to the first the last four people that booked in into that um, uh, care home. And we asked the people how, how satisfied they were. I said, what do you mean how satisfied are we only been here about a week? But how have the staff looked after you so far in the time that you've been here? Well, we haven't got a complaint or anything. Have you, can I just ask you a simple question? You're in here in the care home now. How long have you been busy going to be in here? Well, probably till the end of my life, I would imagine. For the sake of me, nobody's looking after me at home. Okay, can I ask you another question? Have you got any relatives that are close to you? Oh yeah, I've got uh, a couple of brothers, a couple of cousins, and a sister. Okay, how many brothers and sisters? Would you mind me asking you what age are they? So, like, all the ages down. Have you got any friends from your workplace um, that you still say? Oh yeah, friends of what sort of ages are they? By the time I finish, we've got a list of between 25 to 30 people on a list. And out of those, a third of those were potential people that would be your potential clients for the future. Not for today, not for next week, maybe next year or the year after, maybe the other one every now and then. But they weren't seeing the opportunity, they were more interested in filling the bucket now and doing absolutely nothing to look after the ones that they've already got. How often is it that we forget to look after the customers that we've already got and not looking after them properly? So we put a program into place against their better judgment, they were all against the idea, the CEO agreed, but the rest of the board of directors weren't too happy with it because they just wanted a simple solution. They wanted some magician to go up there with a magic wand and start putting more customers in. They weren't worried about what happens here. Anyway, they decided to implement um, this process in about three of their um, care on before rolling it out fully. So every three months, I would make a phone call to see what sort of progress they were making. It was always like, yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we're trying, we're trying but we can't see any results. About 14, 16 months, I guess a call from Peter. Mo, we're fully converted. We're fully converted, we're on board. I said, what do you mean? But he said, I'm a convert. I said, you are? I, I, I'm fully converted now, and I'm a full convert. I said, which bus did you go to? <laughs> he said, no, no, seriously. He said, I've converted, I'm really, really converted, I'm behind you. I said, sorry, you lost me, Peter. What are you trying to say? He said, look, your idea really, really works. And the three branches that we've been um, testing this out on at the moment, I have seen something, I've been in this industry for 30 years, so I've seen something that I've never seen in my whole entire life. He said, this month, we've had three people who have been visiting members of their families, and then went back told their friends, and their friends came and seen the service that we were providing. And they went and told their families, they got, the local authorities say we want our family members out of these care homes and we want them going to one of these care homes because of the way you look after them. 
and this, we have three referrals that were taken from other care homes out there to bring them into us. I've never seen that done. I've never seen that done. They started to change. It took them a further 18 months or two years to fully have the whole, the whole operation running in the way where they look after the customers rather than looking after their own interests, looking after the interests of the customers. And I'll tell you what, four years down the line from the, from the moment I walked in to the end, they were running at an average 89% capacity. Why? Because they decided they cared about their customers as opposed to caring after their bottom line.